can be believing that if they're not consciously racist, then they must not be racist, even as they participate in violence. And Never defined as of yet. <laughs> The participation yeah, right. in violence. Never defined. I'm guessing violence, she's... I'm going to try to come at this from their point of view, is, like, mm. the, the concept of being white and, like, colonialism and everything. What? <laughs> the existence of whiteness or words or... <laughs> the existence of words is violence. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's a bitch. Well, no, she hasn't. Jeez. She hasn't defined it. She just alluded to mm -hmm. per participating in this all-encompassing system of whiteness automatically as violence, whatever that mm -hmm. means. So, words are probably included, like the mm -hmm. concept of words and language. Every white person also truly believes that they are the special and unique exception of privilege and get. So much so that they each individually believe they are the true liberators of the third world. It's their calling, the chosen one. And what we were kind of having a moment... Do, do you think you're a liberator of the third world? It's you. Yeah. You walk around saying, you know, I'm going to liberate our, the third world. You know, America's you know, our government kind of has those moments where it's like, we're going to spread democracy. Mm -hmm. Oh, cover story. Is that what you mean? Cover story. Well, What's well, what's weird? She's not even saying like yeah, like the government. She's saying means. white people. white people. Yeah, yes, weird. Like every individual white person has this thought. Right now, they believe that they are the anointed teaching stages of privilege and whiteness, and you cannot even laugh because you have to oh, I know what's happening here. Okay, she is mad that Robin D'Angelo, a white woman, is getting so much uh, publicity. Ooh. We're jelly, talking about jelly. white privilege. Okay, that's what's happening here. Robin D'Angelo's white? Yeah, D'Angelo, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yes, dude. You don't know what she looks like? No. You never looked up? You never I, Googled I, I, Robin D'Angelo? I knew she was the, she's the critical race. Uh, she's yeah. the white Cola fragility lady. Right? lady. Okay, you I didn't know said she hustler. was white. Holy shit, this makes, oh my God, this is. This makes it all so much funnier. She's I thought super she was white. a black woman. No. Really? You thought Robin D'Angelo was black? Yes. Oh, that's I crazy. I figured. Okay. I guess not. No, she was on oh. Jimmy Kimmel telling him about his white privilege. She's what? fucking white oh, as wait. driven snow. I see her picture now. I've seen her before. Okay. Yeah, you probably, maybe mm -hmm. you were just associating her with someone else. Insane. That's yeah. hilarious. All right. I remember that it's not ironic for them. identity of rampant exceptionalism both become believable and the norm for white people. Language gives us access to how white people consciously view themselves. White speak is the language of opposite. The difference between what you say and what you do. It gives us an entry point into the white mind. Since white people are little consciously Wait, oh my god, she keeps saying things and then she doesn't explain what the fuck yeah, she's talking about. She just about. moves on. What white language is the language of opposites? What yeah. She what just improving. Yeah, she just sounds making like... it up as she goes. No, she's got like, this written out. She labored over this for months, I'm certain of it. Just, oh my god, I'm speaking at Yale. This has to be perfect. I bet if we saw her notes, it was all like she didn't write it or handwrite it or type it. It was all like cut and paste from magazines. She pulled like a Sarah hostage Palin letter. And it's like written on her hand. <laughs> Maybe so. Whiteness. <laughs> just white white people live in a world of opposites mm -hmm. via their white language. I just Yeah. What's up with it's that? It's like she has mad libs, but like she did it at the last second and just filled everything in with white. Yeah. <laughs> white people. It just doesn't make any sense. I don't I thought this was going to be like, I came here thinking, okay, you know, maybe she'll have some points or something. Nah. <laughs> no, no, it's no, nope. this is horrible. We need to first understand and name how they do see themselves. Like you have created a systematic methodology to experience violence as not me. So I'm going to use language accurately as we begin to understand the white mind. I'm going to rename and create our own lexicon and like, this is going to be some shit. <laughs> white people gouge out their eyes to keep the image of themselves as superheroes. What so the fuck? 
she, she thinks so highly of herself. She's like, I'm going to create a new lexicon to expose the white hypocrisy. Yeah. And she can't even explain any of, she just, she's just giving you her like thesis statement with no explanation to anything that she's talking about whatsoever. Not only that, her thing was a copy paste of the Bible. That's a cliche. <laughs> gouge out your eyes. If your eyes cause you to sin, gouge it out. What the hell? I thought you were bringing some originality here. There you go. What's I'm like confused on? if we're too stupid or too smart to understand this. Oh, because yeah. like, I literally, I can't process this because, hold on, this thing that's on the screen right now. So There's if you create a narrative uh -huh. that others need and you're graciously saving them, you can basically justify all violence. Like, <laughs> what is she talking about? Is she talking about... Again, that's that's Antifa right there. That's perfect. About... That's perfect Antifa right there. Because mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. create a na narrative that others need you, and you're graciously saving them, like helping marginalized people, the trans community, uh -huh. whatever it is, you can basically justify all violence. Isn't that like the BLM riots summed up right there? Well, that's true of all violence. Is generally there's some. There's a narrative about the just yeah. need behind it. So, yes, I assume what she's specifically referring to because because she's a horrible racist is she's saying that like she's kind of what I'm trying to remember. What's it called? The like the the idea that white people had to drag non-white people like into the modern era through you mm. know via colonialism. Is she talking about like white allies trying to be? not racist no, she no, like, she, oh, we... she's talking about the white savior stuff she talked about it earlier. Oh, okay, okay she's specifically i'm just saying it's it's amazing that it fits both sides both sides try to do this both sides try to say oh you know i'm the magnanimous one here helping mm -hmm. everybody well there's like but, a there's a picture from the 1800s where it's like a white guy and on his back he has like africans and like asians and you know they're all drawn as like horrible stereotypes mm -hmm. And you see, he's like carrying them towards like modernity. And it seems like she thinks that this is the world we still live in. Like all white people mm -hmm. still think they're just dragging non-white people towards progress or something. Mm -hmm. I assume that's what she's talking about. It's like an inkblot test. What is the right. violence that we're trying like, to justify? What? That's what I want to know. Well, she's, I guess... I guess our society is the violence. Right. We're violently oppressing non non white people. Racist them, you can basically justify all violence. It's a psychological goal. What goodness is an identity to consciously experience violence as not me? And it's not just an organizing identity; it's also a. Well, she hasn't. She hasn't given. Oh no. A prescription here about what you're supposed to do she's going judith butler on us here Be well because she's saying she's saying okay all these white people are all evil because they're hiding their racism and all the white people that are helping are only pretending to help because they they have fetishized their guilt but mm -hmm. so what is what is what does she want white people to do to help she hasn't laid any of this out yeah I'm and not just any performance, it's the showstopper of all shows, the Tony of Tony. What goodness is a particular genre of live theater that focuses on the optics of caring? Every public moment in the world signals their innate virtuosity she, and nobility. She sounds like she's just describing, like, you know, virtue signaling liberals and <laughs> that kind so of thing. Funny. It's is so that funny. what she's talking about? No, she's talking about the opposite side. She's talking about like she's she's definitely in that woke camp talking about Well, I don't know. I think she is because I think she I think she no, I think she's talking about like the I don't know, maybe I'm projecting what She doesn't say specifically, so. Well, mm -hmm. that's what's No, I think she is because in the Instagram post she said that conservatives are oh, yeah, more you're right. mentally yes. healthy than liberals you're because right. conservatives are in touch mm -hmm. with their anger. So I think this entire speech is geared towards the quote-unquote white liberal. The white lib. Oh, okay, yes. now this makes a little more sense. The, the white libtard. Mm -hmm. 
the unbridled expression of tears, raw indignation, and outrage over all the world's atrocities are part of a careful cultivation of how white people need to be seen. Hmm. Doesn't don't but every, why, everyone needs to be seen though? Yeah, but if white people are so evil as she's putting forward, why do they need to put on this show? Who's the show for? Mm. Mm. Good question. But all the world's atrocities are part of the careful cultivation of how white people need to be seen. It's a stuff of legends. You know when it's happening because you just kind of want to sit back, get some popcorn, and like watch the show of emotion. It's going to be epic and long, but so grab a beer and make sure it's cold. You gotta ask the question, why white people have the highest level of sanctimonious outrage for things that have never happened to them? Well, also... Wait a minute. So, yeah. this is hilarious on two levels. First of all, this lady's not black. Okay, so she's so talking about having sanctimonious outrage for things that have never happened to you. Mm -hmm. She's mm -hmm. she's over here talking about like all the black people that, that the whiteies have destroyed. Mm -hmm. But shouldn't she... If you want white people to be engaged in battling racism, don't you want them to be outraged at things that are racist? Like, yeah. Well, how what I've, to what I've noticed them? recently in the discourse on mm. the left side <laughs> is there's this new kind of like breaking apart from wanting even white people's help. And mm. now it's like they're just kind of rejecting the whole white savior thing and like uh for example like when i say something that outrages mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. there'll be like a whole ton of people on twitter like this is why we can't trust white leftists like this is why we don't want them to <laughs> what help oh my right, god right. that's hilarious they're all waiting like, for you to drop your mask yeah yeah so yeah like every week i have a mask slip apparently <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I see that a lot and it's it's always from people that don't even follow me or whatever but they're always just like yeah this is why we can't trust white leftists this is why white mm -hmm. bread tubers even though i'm not even bread, but they like you know they they don't want they just they don't really want what again this is like broad brush because obviously there are mm. people who appreciate allies and stuff but there's this push that's just like oh this is why we can't trust them this is why we don't need their help we don't need their you know white saviors or whatever how and long before we openly start start talking about segregation again That's they already do that but they do that in like a really weird way where it's like oh different graduation ceremonies for different races yeah well, <laughs> yeah that's segregation so separate but equal remember right it's so sad, so sad. <laughs> is it I, if i don't know because we have the luxury of being in the majority so maybe mm. they want maybe excuse feels, me adam well i mean we're all sitch with your digital blackface. Excuse me, I'm Italian. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm a Jew, okay? Every time, every time as a child that I had to walk into a mall oh, or a shopping true. center during oh Christmas God, and they were playing comes. Christmas music just constantly. It, it just here reminded it me oh, of my shit. oppression of oh, being shit. Jewish and not celebrating mm -hmm. Christmas. I understand, Sitch. That's what infuriates him. When, fact, do you, that... June? Do you understand? <laughs> How have you been oppressed? You're Italian. They haven't been oppressing Italians for 50 or 60 years. Yeah, it's been a long time. We need to get back to Italians, <laughs> oppress them. That's yeah, right. go back to we need to go back. I've seen Goodfellas. I remember. I've seen The Godfather. I know when Italians were oppressed. 